Welcome back. We've got a new tool in the workshop, the CMS router system. Lots to talk about, but first, here's the jingle. The CMS router setup has a lot going on in here. There's a base unit, there's a module for the router, we've got fences, we've got guards, we've got feather guards, brackets galore, we've got a sliding table, we've got a mitre gauge, and we have a extension table and some dust extraction to look at. So a lot going on. This is going to be a multi-part video, so subscribe, hit the notification, give me some likes and give me your comments back. We'll start off by looking at the table module. This is the CMS GE Compact System, CMS Compact Modular System. This to be precise is the base unit and that will take a variety of modules. We're going to be working on the router module but it will also take a table saw module, a sanding module and a jigsaw module. All available in the UK, I've heard that some of those modules may not be available in the Americas, so check out your local retailer for details. Like all festival tables, it comes in two modes. The bench mode, which is how it's configured at the moment, or the freestanding mode. In the bench mode, you're using these little rubber feet. They rest on the bench or on the floor, giving it stable, allowing you to use it in that configuration. Obviously, the legs will fold out, undo these knobs all the way, that will lift up, lock into position, and then you just tighten these up, same on this leg here, tighten that up. That then gives us a free standing mode, and the height will be 900 millimeters, which is the same height as the multifunction table, the Capex saw, and pretty much every other table type device in the Festool range. It comes with an inbuilt power safety switch on and off. Connecting to that is a power feed out that we plug the appropriate device, the router, the TS55, etc., into, and a mains cable that plugs into a standard wall socket or into the CT range of extractors. Once you plug it into the CT system, auto dust extraction starts whenever you power the table up. And the idea is you're now controlling the device from this stop circuit here, and as you'd expect, that has a start button on it and a larger soft bu a stop button. So if you hit that stop button, all the power's cut off from the tool and that's a safety feature. The table comes with a cable tidy at the back, so we can, when you're out and about on the road we can take this long cable and that can just oops wrap that cable out of the way which makes it easy uh, for carrying around makes it a bit portable and there's also just inside here you can just see that some cutouts and that will take a standard festool push stick note you do not get a push stick with the router system you only get the push stick with the table saw system expensive oversight who knows but you don't get one so you need to buy that as an optional extra or use something else this chain here that you can see knocking about that's just got a plastic clip on the back and that works with the TS55 so you can lock that on when you're using the table saw module I don't need that for the router but we're going to leave it in place because at some point we are very likely to um, purchase the table saw module as well. The table comes with a instruction book, doesn't really <laughs> tell you much because there's not an awful lot to say, but it talks about the main features and again that's multilingual, but what it does come with, which is useful, is the all-inclusive service that Festool give us. And once you register this online, that gives us a three-year unlimited warranty and also the theft protection, so that's well worth having. In the UK it comes into the 240 volt configuration which is what I have here. It will also come into the 110 volt configuration if you're using or uh, if you're working with, uh, on, on a site where that is a requirement. Obviously in your area, your region, it will come with the appropriate kit. 
that's it that's all you can say about the table really so we'll now start to look at putting the module into place I'm going to leave it in the bench top mode because I think that will make it easy for you to see on the overhead camera this is the router module it's a pretty sturdy piece of aluminium and you can see there's a number of holes on the top for fixing accessories too. It's got two cutout holes here, which is for your fingers when you're taking it in and out so you don't trap it. And you've got some um, cams here for locking the table into place. There's also a hole here. That takes a winding knob, which means you can lower and raise the router from the top, which is great for changing the bits and also adjusting the height for the overall cut. Turning the module over you can see those two cams that lock it in position and you can see this black device here. That black device is the thing that raises and lowers the router, the router lid. There's a number of posts, one, two and three. They're used for securing the router into place. So let's rest this upside down and we'll now fit the router to it. The module will take the OF1010, the OF1400 and the OF2020. I saw some information that says the OF2020, although it fits, is not recommended in the, in, the, in the Americas region. I don't understand why that is, but apparently it voids the warranty. So just go ahead and check that in your region. In the UK, it comes with not only the instructions for fitting the 2020, but the kit to fit it as well, and it doesn't violate any warranties. Not sure what's going on there, but just check that out. The first job is to select the appropriate insert for this area against the router that you're actually using. It comes with three inserts, a dark grey one, a light grey one and a green one. The green one is for the OF2020, the light grey one is for the OF1400 and the dark grey one is for the OF1010. For the 2020 there's also a second insert that slots inside the green insert and that just allows you to put different router um, inserts in there depending on the size of the router bit that you're using so in reality you get a green black thing that sits inside the the, these devices all they do with the product number facing this side of the table where the lift is that just drops into the hole similarly and similarly that drops into the hole we're using the OF1400 so we're going to be using the light grey one just out of interest, if you're using the OF2020, you also get this Perspex clip. That attaches to the router itself and that helps with dust collection on that particular router. You don't need this for the 1400 or the 1010, but keep it safe because who knows what we're going to buy in the future. So we simply take the light grey clip, drop it into that hole. It doesn't snap in, it's a very, very loose fitting and that's okay, it's not broken, that's how it's designed. Inside the kit, you also get this little metal bracket. Rectangle, it's got a thin lug on one end and a fat lug on the other end and it also comes with a small black knob. That's a locating pin and that attaches to your router. Here's my 1400 router and it attaches to this piece here, the same, uh, the same part of the router that the support foot on the LR32 fastened to. So on the flat side of the router, you can't mistake it because there's nothing else um, that this will attach to. What is important is to orientate this in the right direction. You either need a fat end or the thin end. The thin end is for the OF1010. The fat end is for the OF1400 and the OF2020. So the fat end needs to be facing the down, the base of the router, and you simply secure that into position with that black lug. Next thing you want to do is to make sure that your router is plunged down and that's locked off. With the router done, you now need to turn your attention to the lift mechanism. And you can see there's a metal tab here. 
If you're using the OF2020, that stays in the vertical position and that's where it comes packed with the kit. So you don't need to make any changes to this at all for the OF2020. If you're using the OF1400 or you're using the OF1010, you need to remove this metal tab. Again, there's a black uh, locking nut. And with the flat end, not the curve end, facing in, you just simply slot it underneath that black lip on the lift. And that then just locks into position. And all that metal disc is going to do is to push on the router to adjust the movement up and down as this rotates. Bring the router in and we now want to locate that fat pin into the widest hole, the fat hole. And that's just to make sure that this is orientated correctly on the router module. <clears throat> if you were using the OF1010 and the thinner lug, you'd, you'd mount it into that hole. The 1400 and the 2020 go into the fat hole. So you now take that lug, attach it to that hole, and just rue this around a little bit because you now want this part of the router here, the part that would house the spring for the plunger mechanism, the top of that needs to be lined up with that metal tab that you've just put into place. Perfect. You now want to locate these metal brackets and the long locking nuts. These are the metal brackets and as you can see they have a curved end and they have a flat end. These lock it into position and those lugs, one lug, two lug, three lugs that we pointed out earlier on is what these attach to. The curved end goes onto the aluminium table, the flat end goes onto the base of the router. And they just lock down into place like so. Not got to be super tight, it just starts to make sure that that's locked into position. With that locked down, you now want to take the weight of the router, undo the plunge lock and just allow the router to come up until it rests on that metal lever. It's not uh, discussed in the instructions, but you want to make sure that your depth guide here is well out of the way. Make sure that the lowest post is aligned up, undo this and just pull it up out of the way. If you don't do that, you're going to limit the, the depth of cut that your router will actually have. And you're done. I've got the dust extractor um, attached here and obviously our power will come on there once we get to that point. Next job is to insert this module into the table. Can you see this groove here? And can you see this cutout here? This cutout here lines up and surrounds that sort of kind of roundish profile there. So drop the router through the hole first of all, and then just line up that back thing. And that basically has created a hinge for us. Using the two holes, drop that into position. Once it's there, you then lock these cams down by just rotating them through 180 degrees and that is now locked into position. And that's it. The um, router module is now attached to the table. You can see that in the bench top mode there's plenty of room underneath for the router which is fantastic. So now what we need to do is to attach the power. So using the quick plug that comes with your router and as you would expect, oh it's getting heavy now, we're just going to connect the quick plug into the mains part of the, of the, um, of the router. Simply plugs in and rotates to lock it into place as always. There we go. And then your mains cable will then connect into whatever appropriate power feed you have on the table. Now this is a long cable, so what I'm tending to do is to use the, ta the cable tidy at the back, otherwise I've got this cable in my way. So I wrap it round the cable tidy a few times, and then I can feed it in and then connect it into the 
power socket. And that just keeps things tidy and out of the way. Now obviously you could use the standard dust extraction hose that comes with the CT and that would just lo lock on to your router as you normally would. And that would give you adequate, adequate dust extraction from the base. However, we can do better than that. A separate kit gives you this sort of device. It's got a 27 millimeter hose on one side and a 36 millimeter hose on the other side. And it comes with a Y-shaped bracket and that bracket attaches to the CT device. It's also got a little clip here just for rooting things out of the way. So we now use this for our dust extraction. The 27 millimeter, it's a bayonet lock as always, and that will just fit onto the, the dust collector on the router. Put it in place. Oh, and then lock it in place. We can then route the dust extractor through the dust um, cables through the back of the table so they are out of the way. And we can use this clip to just clip to the V area at the back of the table. There's three prongs on this, one, two and three, and it clips on with the two prongs at the top and it just clips perfectly into position and that then allows us to just make sure that cable is not going to catch on anything. And that, get, that manages the dust extraction under the table and this will then manage the dust extraction on the top of the table. What you now attach to the top depends on the job that you're doing. We, ne we now need to look at the fence and we also need to look at the, what I'll call the free routing dust shroud. We'll do that in the next video.